Hi guys and welcome back. In this video we're going to be simplifying our code a bit and making it a bit more reusable by creating a client for our API. Creating API clients is a very common thing to do. Right now our application has a lot of knowledge of how the API works. For example, it knows that it has to make a request to this particular endpoint, it knows that it needs this particular app ID, it knows that it has to access the rates key in the response, and so on. Now, this is all well and good, and it has to be somewhere in our application in order for it to work, but maybe it doesn't belong in our main application. We can encapsulate it in another file so that it's easier to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file that will be a client to this API. And what that means is it's going to contain a set of functions that allows us to very easily interact with this API without having to know exactly what endpoint we want to use and so on. So what we'll do is we are going to essentially delete this stuff here. And we will say that the client is an open exchange client and we'll pass in the app ID. Then the GBP amount will no longer be the USD amount multiplied by the exchange rates. We no longer have those. We will say client.convert USD amount from USD to, oh, sorry, let's stick to double quotation marks to GBP. So what this will do is we will create this object of this class open exchange client, and then it will have a method called convert and this method will take in a number, a currency that it should start from, and a currency that it should convert to. Let's go and create a new Python package that I'm going to call libs, because this client is a library, and I'm going to call this open exchange. The reason why I'm calling this package libs, by the way, is because the files inside this package are files for interacting with other things that are not part of our application. And whenever you're interacting with other things that are not part of your application, that's usually called a library for something else. So here we're defining a library for the Open Exchange Rates API. So we're gonna say import requests and we will define our Open Exchange client. The base URL that we're going to define here is https open exchange rates.org slash api then we will define an init method that takes in an app id and we'll say self app id is app id and then we will say that the latest exchange rates are the ones that we already requested earlier so return requests.get self.base url slash latest dot json app id equal self dot app id dot json so we'll define the latest as being the result of getting the latest dot json again passing in the app id and we'll only get the json back so we no longer need the response for anything so we're just gonna extract the json from that and return it then we'll define our convert method that takes in a from amount a from currency and a to currency. What this says is that the rates are self.latest rates, like that, and the to rate, so the rate that we're interested in is the rates of to currency. Then we'll say if the from currency is USD, which it's almost always going to be. The reason we are extracting this into a separate if statement is because the base rate of the latest is always USD. So we'll just say return from amount times to rate. We'll leave it as this just for a moment while we continue with our app. And here we're going to make this a property. The reason for it is because this doesn't take any arguments and it just makes a return. It doesn't actually modify the object at all. So by making it a property, it's a little bit easier to access and to reason about knowing that when you use it, that you cannot pass in any arguments or do anything with it. So just by doing self.latest and getting the rates of that, it almost looks like this is a value stored within the class, but it is a dynamic value. Okay, so now that we have this, 
as long as we are converting from USD to GBP, this is going to work. So all we have to do is import. So from libs open exchange, import open exchange client. Let's run our app. And you'll see that the value is the same, which is good. That is exactly what we wanted. Now, if the input currency is not USD, we need to convert it into USD first before converting it into the final currency. So we'll say from in USD is from amount, but divided by the rate in from currency. Normally, when we are performing a currency exchange, we multiply by the rate in order to give us the base in the new currency. But if we want to go the other way around, where we're going to turn a currency into the base, we have to divide. And then we'll say return from in USD multiplied by rate, just as above. All right, so now we can convert from any currency into any other currency using this method, which is much simpler because now that we've got that, you could potentially write unit tests for it. You could, of course, use it in multiple places in your application. You can write documentation for it so it's a little bit clearer what it does. Then you don't have to have all that code in just one place in your application. So if you wanted to convert a thousand euros to GBP, do make sure to rename this variable if you do that. Then you'll see that 1,000 euros is GBP 885, basically 886. And this is here where we encounter the long numbers. If you want to format a number as two decimal places, you just have got to add after the variable name, but within the curly braces, colon 0.2f. And that is going to limit this to two decimal places. And you can see that it rounds appropriately, and then you get 886.00. But we're going to go back into USD just so it's a bit clearer. And also all our strings are using USD. That's it for this video. We have created a simple client that gets the data from the API and then uses it all within one class so that it's much easier to think about, easier to reuse and easier to test later on as well. Thanks for joining me in this video. I'll see you in the next one.